It's time. It's time for the finals of this week's ESL Open Cup number 236 for the Korean server. Now you'd imagine that it's Hero versus Dark, because those two, they keep playing finals after finals. Apparently though, that is not the case this time around, as one of them did not participate and the other one got eliminated early. Can you believe it? Spotting right here in the top left hand corner in game number one on a map called Oceanborn. Of course, a best of five series, so we're gonna see quite a few maps here. Playing with the red Protoss pieces, we have none other than Classic, and his opponent in the far bottom right, playing of course with the blue SCVs. We're looking at Oliveira's main command center. Good old Oliveira, I feel like I don't get to cast this man nearly as often as I would like to. Classic has been playing in a ton. I have been, yeah, I've been able to cast quite a few of Classics games, and I think everybody's got a pretty decent understanding of what the man likes to do right now. What he likes to do is play high-level StarCraft 2, right? I think we are all, all aware of that, but Oliveira, little bit more of a question mark in my mind. Although he has been playing in quite a few events, I, yeah, I haven't really been casting as many of his games, personally. Now, of course, Oliveira from China, previous world champion of StarCraft 2. Also, he called himself... A normal man. God, that interview he gave after he won the World Cup still warms my heart. And ever since that event, actually, ever since the man powered up, he never really slowed down very much. Like, there was a, a bit of a period of time right after he won the World Cup where he seemed like he was not quite at the same level as at that event, but I guess it may have just given him the confidence boost that he always needed or something, because even though he's been competing for a very long time, yeah, he... Uh, He's now uh, uh, certainly a step ahead of all of the other Chinese players. Although the Chinese players are getting significantly uh, significantly better as well. Players like, for example, Firefly are really, really good. Cyan actually recently changed his username. So the player Cyan now goes by the username of Lancer. Anyways, for some reason, programmers like to occasionally change their name. But if you are going to change your username, right, I do recommend you go ahead and win the World Cup. Yeah, if you're thinking about, yeah, uh, changing your username as a pro gamer, it is quite convenient to change and win the world championships right away, because that makes people remember your username a little bit quicker. Now, let me just go ahead and make sure that my health bars are turned on. There you go. Oliveira has decided to go for a triple Rex opener. So, no... No tech early on, right? There's not going to be any Hellions or any, I don't know, like Benchies flying around or whatever. This will be a very bio-focused army. It should be double tech lab here and a whole lot of marine production. In the meantime, on the other side of the map, Classic is starting off this series with a Stargate. He doesn't know exactly what he's playing against at this point in time. A little bit of a dangerous opener, of course, from Oliveira. Because he's essentially letting the Protoss player do whatever they like, but it's difficult for Classic to figure out exactly what's going on. Yeah. Problem is, if you put those structures far away enough... Exactly. You cannot see the follow-up structures. So thank you, Classic, for showing us exactly what I'm talking about. He cannot see exactly what's going on, although it is a little bit funky to not see a factory attached close to that main ramp. Oracle will give him all the information here eventually. Stimpak will be nice and quick, of course. So it is information that Classic will need as well. Relatively uncommon build from, from Terran, but nothing something that we can call, you know, completely out of the ordinary. Especially from, from Oliveira. Oliveira seems to be a big fan of these two base based attacks. Just a lot of bio aggression, I guess, in general. The series that Cyril uh, and Oliveira played at the ESL Masters Tournament just about a month, maybe two months or so ago at this point. Quite memorable. Oliveira, the only player who managed to actually push Cyril to the limit. Cyril seemed to be cruising through the entire tournament overall. But then, well, he almost lost that best of five series in, I think it was the semifinals against Oliveira. Yeah, Oracle not really achieving that much. Stimpak and Combat Shields are going to finish up here in just a moment. Reinforcing Marines should be able to make quick work of that Oracle. Question is though, is Oliveira even really looking to go across the map? Yeah. Kind of crazy actually, right? So Oliveira managed to go 3-2 to two against Serral. Serral wins. And then Serral proceeds to take down Maru in the finals 4-0. to zero. Kind of an insane stat in general. 
I mean, 4 0 Maru in the first place is ridiculous, but... Yeah. It shows that Oliveira was not just, you know, like one weekend where he was looking really, really strong. But, uh... A year and a couple of months ago, maybe. I don't know, it's been a little while at this point. But anyways, it, it, yeah, he's got some staying power here for certain. And he's been doing uh, very well over the last couple of months. Like, for the World Cup that's coming up right now, in the middle of August, I'm actually secretly cheering for Oliveira. Like, I always find myself secretly cheering for Oliveira. He just seems like such a nice guy to be winning these events. My mind says that Sarah was the favorite, but... My heart says Oliveira. Robe is coming up eventually here for Classic, who now has the third base secured. He's been sprinkling in a bunch of shield batteries. He's got a decent army, but this is a lot of Marines. I mean, I think Classic should have enough, but there are obviously these tricky engagements. I don't know how to feel about the shield battery positioning. So, Classic is assuming the fight is going to take place through here, or through that choke point. And I guess these shield batteries allow him to venture a little bit further out than he would ordinarily be allowed to. Colossus, by the way, is coming, and that's going to make this fight so much easier. So, if Classic can buy a little bit more time, and it looks like that will be the case, Big Daddy Colossus is here. It's going to use its cliff walking to get down to that low ground nice and quickly. Yeah, easiest hold of Classic's life. Didn't even need to fight. All right, so in the meantime on the other side of the map, we have the additional barracks coming up, third command center building on the low ground. Ultimately, this push from Oliveira has sort of fizzled out and achieved very little. Some mind games are being played and Oliveira is trying to outsmart Classic, but it seems to me like Classic has got the perfect response so far. He's going to double, yeah, double make sure here as well that no Medivac drop is gonna be able to sneak through the cracks. I guess maybe a pylon over on the left side of the map would be nice as well. But overall, this has been smooth sailing here for Classic. A Reaper is coming up. Now, it's got to be a misclick. Pro gamers do make mistakes. Even normal men make mistakes, apparently. That's so cursed. A Marine and a, uh, <laughs> a Reaper building at the same time. Alrighty, so the question is, when is Classic going to push across the map? He doesn't even really need to push, but I'm assuming he will go for a move out here momentarily. Especially now with all of those additional gateways coming up. Charge is going to finish momentarily. I mean, he can just expand. Yeah, he doesn't really need to be too aggressive. We're going nine gateways in total. Oliveira's army is obviously still big. Ghost Academy is coming up right now as well, now that the third base has been secured. And Vikings are being pumped out. Four at a time. A very tame game, actually. Considering the aggressive opener... Barely anything has died so far. This might be one of those games, though, where it will just be one big clash and then the game is just sort of over. Both players here are tiptoeing around each other the entire time. Don't want to poke the bear. But... What if the bear wants to be poked here in a moment? I, I think that's what we're gonna see. Storm is coming. Yeah, so we're not really going for any sort of timings here anymore. Timings have been thrown way out of the window. A little bit of a zealot drop, but I mean, that's mostly just a skill check. If you can get the council on the fourth, that would be nice, but... Easy hold right there for classic ones. Again. Alrighty, Storm about halfway done. We already have three Ghosts out on the battlefield. Ghosts, of course, with their EMP ability, they can shut down a lot of energy. Stasis Ward here up on the high ground. Shouldn't grab too much, but you never know. Alrighty. I don't think without Storm, Plastic is gonna try and hold that. Misrally the Immortal, that is uncharacteristic. Let's see. So Nexus is gone. No council on that one either. Oliveira just... Alright. Actually, no. I thought the Nexus was going down. It was a pylon. Nexus might not be too far behind, though, at this rate. Thankfully, right there for Classic, it was just a, uh, a pylon. But no, the Nexus is going to be hit as well. Really? What? Uh -huh. Cla Go back and kill that! How did we... Uh, anyways, all the Colossi at this point are gone. 
the distraction here is is great, right? So there's been zealots going to town over at the third, and killing 18 SCVs is actually a little much. Command center council over there too. Mules are good, but not that good. Oh my god. Okay, so those zealots actually look at these guys. One of the least microbo units in the entire game. All you do is just attack move with them, right? That's about 95% of their uh, their usability. But they just... I think they may have just won Classic the match, to be honest. They allowed him to keep that base alive, even though it wasn't really meant to be. And they allowed him, well, to kill about 20 or so workers. And that certainly wasn't supposed to happen either. Okay. We're gonna go for YOLO drop. Let's see. This is the one drop to find them and in the darkness bind them. We have a couple of libs over here up north as well. But the libs are getting pwned. Let's see. Nexus is already gone. EMP in that choke point hits like a truck. Luckily for, uh, for Classic, he still has the energy right there on the Templar. Zealots are looking to see if they can get another 20 kills. Not gonna happen this time around. Dude, imagine if Oliveira actually would have killed that Nexus. This game would have been... Uh... This game would have been over. Okay. Well, ultimately, StarCraft 2 is a game of making mistakes, right? Oh, big EMP! All of the High Templar are out of energy. And that means that Oliveira is going down the... Never mind, up the ramp again. We could have tried to chase it at least a little bit. Okay. I think both players are a little bit confused about the current state of the game. I think both of them believe that they are behind. Which creates this really awkward moment. Where... I've got a feeling there were multiple moments where Classic could have pushed for the win and Oliveira could have pushed for the win. But neither of them really believes that in this match at this point in time. So, both of them have decided that they want to be sitting back instead. This is one of the stranger games of TVP I've casted lately, actually. Especially after all the Clem vs. Max Pex games. Where we rarely see any player go over like 12 units in total, because they just keep being at each other's throats the entire time. Classic is going to test the waters now that he's got enough energy for some storms again. He's going to need it. Oh my god, that's a big storm. A lot of damage being done over here. A lot of the units will also get blown up, but at the same time, the Planetary Fortress is being targeted. SCVs try to repair it back up to full HP, but that won't be happening. A lot of the Protoss army, though, is distracted, killing gas geysers and SCVs, and that's nice and all. Nah, I think he's got more than enough here. Yeah, in the end, it's still fine. Sometimes you gotta be worried about the Terran counterattack if you end up losing your army right there because only half of it is actually fighting the Terrans. But in the end, it's Classic who wins a very, well, a very laid back game number one. Site Delta is going to be the second game in this best of five series. Hmm. What's the plan, Ollie? We're gonna go and send an SCV across the map here pretty early on. Supply Depot up on the high ground. Ah, cheeky little proxy barracks. Yeah, that was a bit of a strange game number one, right? Where Oliveira decided to go for a timing attack when he thought his opponent had him countered, so he decided not to go for the timing attack, but then he had all these units sitting around, and Classic really didn't believe that he was in really that good of a position, so he also just sort of set back, and then the Nexus ended up... It was a bit of a mess, a bit of a disaster. Ultimately, the Protoss ball just went across the map and slapped Terran in the face. A lot of that, though, was due to the fact that those Templar got pretty much the perfect storms off. Oliveira just... A little earlier in that game, right, he managed to get the perfect EMP, he shut down every single one of the Templar, and then he decided, okay, perfect moment for me to go back home. I always find that decision a little funky as well. That would have been a perfect opportunity to go for a YOLO drop if that was the plan there in the end. But anyways, 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 all of that is in the past. I can imagine now that neither of these two players is particularly happy with how game number one went. 
Even though it's Classic who won there, I think he also has a few question marks. How many Reapers are we gonna produce? It is double gas in the meantime. Factory to complete the wall. Okay. Classic, not really somebody who goes for a lot of cheese in general. He does likes to mix it in. It's not really... He's not really up to, like, stats' level as far as playing defensively goes, but... In general, Classic very much so a defensive Protoss. There's the Reaper. Yeah, yeah, now we gotta go for a uh, proxy command center. Engineering bay at home, fly the command center into the main base, and make a planetary fortress. That's not to win games, but that's to win fans. That's the only reason. I think Oliveira has enough fans out there, actually, as it is. He's become one of the most popular players in the entire game, which is pretty sick. Wait, what? Ooh, after the Reaper... Oh, oh, really? So after the Reaper opener, we're going for a Proxy Marauder follow-up. The only reason why this can win you the game is because it's quite bad. <laughs> and because of the fact that now, there's about 0% chance Classic expects this follow-up. Because this push now hits really quite late. Right, so we have we have a Hellion over here, we got a Reaper over here. It's gonna just be a combination of Terran units. Classic is making the assumption that there is an expansion on the back of this. Proxy Reaper into expansion, nothing out of the ordinary, right? We see a, a, a quick factory, sure. But there, there really should be an expansion at some point. He's, he's looking around. Classic is actually gonna go for a proxy pylon of his own. He doesn't quite realize yet how much of an issue this could become. So this is actually... A proxy marauder drop? Is that what we're looking at? Yeah. Fourth one is gonna spawn. There we go. So obviously concussive shells, right? Very powerful. Probe? Probe? probe. Oh, probe just barely see. Okay. Probe just barely see it here in the end. He wants to catch those stalkers. That's the plan. And those stalkers are dead. Yeah. Full wall in over here. We do have a recall of the Stalkers, whatever else was out on the map. There's a proxy on the other side, one Stalker still set up over there. I do like the rewalling here, but I just wonder if Classic has enough units in the first place. Those two Hellions actually super nice, because they make it difficult for the probes to get a proper surround. This is, this is such a crazy push here from Oliveira. <laughs> uh, GG. Just a good old one base proxy. It's a one base proxy, but with a modern twist, right? It's a one base proxy that is made to look like a normal game. And it ultimately makes the one base proxy attack worse, but because the opponent assumes everything is fine and everything is normal, it works out much better. Because if you just play straight up one base, the Protoss is at this level, we'll be able to hold it quite easily. You can see that Classic really was not expecting a proxy starport on the- Oh my god, hold up. Um, sh I'll shut up, Classic. Apparently Classic is here to return the favor. Alcyone is map number three in this best of five. Classic is now the one proxying a pylon on the other side of the map. <laughs> really? Double proxy? Yep. All right. The so classic kind of, uh, he, he enjoyed the flavor of the one base all in. Maybe he likes it better when he wins with it himself. Let's see. Oliveira not scouting. Creating a full wall off here on top of that high ground quite quickly and that will work out for classic just fine. He's looking around, classic that is, to see if there's any proxies on his side of the map because obviously he will not have S Satyrs is a proxy Reaper, he can literally lose the game to one Reaper. He will not have a whole lot available. Any Stalker or Adept that gets made would have to walk all the way from here, across the map. So if Oliveira had decided to go in this game for the build that he just won with, I think he would win with it very easily once again, but obviously doing the same build back to back. It's a Zealot Rush. Hmm. How do we feel about a Zealot Rush in 2024? 
I mean, it's zealots for now. It will be followed up with what I would imagine is gonna be stalkers, but still. Command center on the low ground, Oliveira is still feeling quite smug after that previous game. Decides to, decides to play completely scoutless. So he has not sent an SCV across, he has not gone for a Reaper. He's gone one Marine straight into a Reactor. There's the Stalkers indeed coming up. <laughs> this is gonna work for Classic. I actually think Oliveira is pretty much already dead. He has some potential to micro his way out of this, but it's gonna be really difficult. The amount of production here for Classic is ridiculous. So Classic is actually gonna go Shield Battery. He's taking every precaution that he needs to defend that home as well, but there's nothing coming across anytime soon. So this is another one of those builds that only works because the opponent decided to go for a build that is very dangerous. <laughs> this is not a game that would really be played on the ladder because everybody on the ladder does some form of scouting, right? But the reason Oliveira isn't scouting is because he just won the game, well, the game that we just saw in the way that he did. Oh, this is why looking at a series of StarCraft is usually a lot more fun than looking at an individual game. Because the series have a story to tell. And the story of this one is, I cheese you, you cheese me. It looks to me like we are gonna go to the next game here. I mean, there's a Cyclone coming. There is, there is potential, technically speaking, but there's just way too much Protoss in the end. Post-Youth. Bit of a strange map, of course. This map was very popular when the map pool was first introduced, and we still see it quite a bit, but... Not as frequently over the last couple of weeks, it seems, or the last couple of months. Or maybe just not in the series that I have picked to cast. Used to be a very popular map 1, map 2 type of map, but... A picture of Nova for the fans. Aw, those fans didn't really like it. These guys, though, look at these two dudes. Yeah, that's every single one of my viewers when there's a Nova picture on the screen. It's okay, it's okay. I get it. There's some beautiful artwork around this map in general. And a trash can, too. In case you don't like the artwork. Usually this map is a lot more macro focused, even though it's kind of wild and, and, and wacky, right? Like the, the map design is very odd. It looks like a two versus two map. There's multiple ramps. The third base is ages away. Even though the map is a little strange, most of the map, most of the games rather on the map that I've seen are quite normal. Unless one of the players decides to go for a quick gold base, the map usually plays out relatively conventional. Relatively conventionally. <laughs> gotta, we gotta change the vocabulary. Look at this poor little Reaper. Forced to go all the way around the map only to get sacrificed in the end. Yeah. Yeah, you're dead, buddy. Maybe not. Oh! No, you're dead. Maybe if you ran a little quicker, you would have been fine. Ooh, Classic wanted to go for an Oracle build, and instead he decides to now cancel upon killing that uh, that Reaper. He cancels the Oracle and goes into a Phoenix opener instead. Quick Robo facility pretty much immediately too. So this is good old Phoenixes into Colossi. Always a nice combination. Always a bit of a dangerous combination as well though, because things can go horribly wrong. It's going to be a Widowmine drop right here from Oliveira, who will be sending some of those units across the map here in just a moment. Or at least, he could be sending them across the map. He might bring the Marines. He doesn't necessarily have to, but... Let's do a little bit of uh, first-person view right here. So this is Classic's, Classic's perspective. This is how dangerous, it is, uh, how dangerous it is, though, for Protoss at this point in the game, right? So what he's doing is he's going into a Robo Bay. He's going to build a third Nexus off of literally two Phoenixes and three Adepts. The only way in which that makes sense is if you are absolutely on point with your Micro. It's very easy to mess this up. You need to have a... 
You obviously need to be really good at the game, but you also need to have a very deep understanding of all of the details and the different varieties of Terran openers that you could be playing against right now. He decides to go for an Immortal here. That's not necessarily something he would do against every single one of the Terran openers. I'm always impressed, actually, with this stage of PvT in particular. This is where, for most ladder heroes, right, most people below the pro level, this is the part of the game that's really difficult. So the scouting has to be on point, and he sees the SCV train leave. Now I'm taking control of the camera again. This is not actually an all-in with all the SCVs. This is not like a full SCV pool and everything like that, but this is still very committed, of course. The siege tank drop. It's coming up. We will probably see a slow push with some Terran structures as well. Immortal here, incredibly handy, and the first siege tank is so exposed. Easy snipe right there for classic, and that's big. Getting that, that first snipe right there on that first unit is absolutely massive. He can obviously lift up the siege tank too. One of the Vikings is running dangerously low. Adept gets sacrificed, but that's fine. Battery overcharge has already been triggered. I mean, this is beautifully defended right here by Classic. It's not over yet. He can still mess this up, but this is about as good as it's going to be. Getting one of, those, one of those siege tanks like that is massive. Obviously, a bit of a distraction here from Oliveira. Decides to go into the main base. In the meantime, a few of the reinforcing units have been picked up, and looks like the main push here is actually, ooh, forced to retreat. Same can be said for those medevacs, uh, or the, that marine group right now inside of that medevac. There's no charge or anything like that, so it is a little difficult, I guess. Oh, wow, Miss Ready to Siege Tank? Why are you here, buddy? Oof. Okay. Oliveira manages to keep most of these units alive but he is going to be forced to retreat now and this makes for an awkward game because there's no third command center anywhere he's got about another three minutes of mining in him before the main base will start running low and now oh, classic sees the additional barracks that have just finished up he sees that this is now turning into effectively a two base all in so classic yep Decides to fire up upgrades. This is not one of those things, right? You kind of just have to figure out, is it possible to get away with these upgrades right now? Do I need to spend chrono boosts on it? Will I be able to finish these upgrades in time, or am I wasting my resources? He decides to go for a fourth nexus. Now, this, <laughs> this goes a little far for me. I would have been frantically chrono boosting out both of these upgrades and just making a stupid amount of units right now. The fourth nexus is maybe just bait. Maybe just to seal the deal. But yeah, here's the rest of the SCVs going across the map. Move out is spotted. Classic knows what's up. Yeah, Classic is actually super good. When Classic is playing well, he's one of the very best protos in the world. And he's been making steady improvements as well over the last yeah, maybe half year or so. That Nexus should not be living, but I mean, to be fair, he doesn't need this Nexus at all. Even if he cancels it, it's still three base versus two. Oh my god. Really? We're doing a missile turret slow push? So missile turrets can be used to shoot at Colossi, because Colossi are, well, very large ground units. But that's obviously an ambitious play. He wants to go for a slow push with the Liberators, the Siege Tanks, and then also these missile turrets. So if these first groups of missile turrets finish up, we'll probably try and do another wave of them. Move and scoot those Siege Tanks further and further forward. It's a dangerous play. The leftover Phoenixes try to kill whatever. Bunkers are coming up as well. Oliveira is making a very scary game out of this. Disruptors, though, are a really nice unit to have. Yep, Siege Tank goes down. Bunker takes a bit of damage. Liberator, though, in good positions, makes it difficult, yeah, for the Protoss to really step forward. Obviously, the Siege Tank can shoot across this little crevice. This is apparently the moment, though, where Classic decides to pull the trigger. Can he bring this finals home? The Siege Tanks are already in a world of trouble. All of them have disappeared. A very difficult call to make, but honestly, a masterclass on how to play Protoss. Really well done right here by Classic. He wins this series. 3-2-1 over Oliveira.